The Sorrows of Young Werther has had its devotees and imitators, but not everyone has been a fan. One significant opponent to the work is the poet Whiston Auden, who described it as follows. To us, it reads not as a tragic love story, but as a masterly and devastating portrait of a complete egoist, a spoiled brat, incapable of love because he cares for nobody and nothing but himself, and having his way whatever the cost to others. To philosopher Roland Barthes, Werther's choice of love object is one of the farcical aspects of the novel. Charlotte, he writes, is a colourless object, placed at the centre of the stage and there adored, idolised, taken to task, covered with discourse, with prayers, and perhaps surreptitiously with invectives, as if she were a huge motionless hen huddled amid her feathers, around which circles a slightly mad cock. Early readers weren't oblivious to Werther's shortcomings. Check out, for example, this illustration and see Werther's cretinously adoring expression. Werther's love for Lotte tells us very little about her, but it tells us a lot about him. Early in part two, Werther writes something significant in a letter to Wilhelm. For we are so constituted by nature that we are ever prone to compare ourselves with others and our happiness or misery depends very much on the objects and persons around us. On this account nothing is more dangerous than solitude. There our imagination, always disposed to rise, taking a new flight on the wings of fancy. This operation of the mind is quite natural, and we continually feel our own imperfections, and fancy we perceive in others the qualities we do not possess attributing to them also all that we enjoy ourselves, that by this process we form the idea of a perfect happy man, a man, however, who only exists in our own imagination. Werther is incomplete. He seeks external affirmation, and in Lotta is attracted to somebody who seems more whole than he feels he is himself. When he first sees Lotta dancing, Werther perceives her union of body and consciousness. Um, this is a conventional artistic image for wholeness, which Yeats would call unity of being. And then, just as symbolically a moment later, Werther's own awkwardness disrupts the overall dance formation. Sigmund Freud's understanding of melancholia is indebted to the sorrows of young Werther. So in turn, Freud's ideas can help us to explore Goethe's character. Werther displays two aspects of Freud's melancholia. First is Werther's narcissistic object choice. Werther is unformed and he is in need of external validation. Unlike the person who is mourning the loss of a love object, the melancholia patient needs the love object to affirm the patient's own value. Rejection is unacceptable. Rage ensues when the subject does not receive the wanted validation. A second aspect of Freudian melancholia is ambivalence towards the love object. We, we know about Werther's devotion to Lotta. We know about how he idealizes her, but he does experience a strange muddle of feelings in response to her. For example, remember I mentioned earlier how Werther glosses over the fact that he has had rage episodes in response to Albert and Lotta, that they have accused him of being violent towards them. The melancholia patient feels helpless, worthless, and is inclined towards destruction. Werther is a man who kisses Lotta all over, having said a moment previously that he was leaving. Werther's emotional overinvestment in Lotta replaces sexual fulfillment. At one point, the two of them seem destined to reenact an adulterous passage in Dante's Divine Comedy, in which Paolo and Francesca read emotionally charged material until they put down the book. But Wilhelm and Lotta don't even kiss at this point. They don't even make eye contact. Weird acts of substitution occur. A canary becomes a fetish object. It is a go-between. Lotta and Wilhelm kiss each other on the lips indirectly by kissing the canary. Whether we sympathize with Werther or mock him, 
the tale of his obsession is deceptively rich. The linear flow of events articulates a new understanding of human complexity.